Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Shane and today we are back. This blanket is gonna bother me <laughs> if I don't pick it up. We are back with week 10 of our pregnancy diaries. Crazy, I'm telling you, I feel like doing these weekly updates has been awesome, um, but I'm that kind of person that like I've always struggled to get my videos out by like a specific time, unless it's like a collaboration and it's not like, you know, I can just kind of post it willy nilly. Um, but I feel good. We got a couple updates, but of course, every week I like to start with my Pregnancy Plus app. So we are gonna go check out. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, tiny. Blech. So today I am 10 weeks and two days pregnant. I, I'm always like a couple days past the actual week uh, date because um, I turn a week on Wednesdays, but Wednesdays are never a good filming day for me. So I'm always like nine weeks and two days pregnant or like 10 weeks and two days pregnant. Anywho, 10 weeks, two days pregnant, crazy. I We are still in my first trimester. We'll also be in my first trimester uh, next week as well, but July 17th, July 17th is when we enter my second trimester. So I still haven't gotten my blood work done. That's going to be this week. Um, and I might, oh boy, I got to get that done by next Thursday. So in week 11, I might kind of throw in like a little vlog kind of clip of me getting my blood done because when I say I have anxiety about it, girl, <laughs> like I'd rather, I would rather go through labor a hundred times than go get blood work done. Mm, I hate it so much. All right. So still haven't been to my uh, next appointment. I mentioned to you guys, actually my next appointment happens to be, I believe July 17th. So when my, my second trimester starts. So anyways, what's going on with the baby? Let me show you real quick because it's finally looking like a baby and I'm so excited. So here we are. This is what we're looking like. This, oh, I love it. how cute. So we're looking most like a baby. Just a quick reminder. This is what we were at last week. So as you can see, we definitely have like, oh, hello. We have like eyelids forming and stuff. So let me, let me let you know what's going on. Fingernails. If you could touch the little fingers, you could feel the tiny fingernails are beginning to form. Oh my God. That is cute. That's cute. Um, the placenta yummy. This week, blood will begin circulating between the uterus and the fetus and the placenta will start functioning. Vital organs, the risk of congenital defects becomes less now as the vital organs are fully formed. Awesome. Good news. And that go that's it. That's back to the fingernail. So obviously you can see that the eyes have moved to the front of the face from last week. Um, now there's like eyelids covering and everything. Let's see. The baby is now the size of a date. I can't remember. I don't believe I, maybe I mentioned it a little bit, but um, there's a whole article about RH negative and, and pregnancy. And it says during pregnancy, you will have a number of blood tests to screen for a variety of conditions. Now, when I was pregnant with my first daughter, I only remember getting blood taken twice. Once when I was like closer to 20 weeks and then again right after she was born. And that's because I have a negative blood type. <laughs> Lucky me. It says 15% of women are rhesus negative. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Rhesus negative. That's what I am. It usually isn't a cause for concern during the first pregnancy, but extra care may, may need to be prevented uh, arising during a later pregnancy. Now, it's super scientific, guys. <laughs> There's a lot of scientific terms, so I'm going to put it in the most generic way possible to explain what happens if you have a negative blood type. So, um, the baby has their own blood, like nor like the maternal blood, my blood, and the baby's blood does not mix. Um, but let's say like during labor or something, something went wrong and it mixed. If my baby has a positive blood type, because I'm negative, positive and negative don't like each other. Our antibodies, my antibodies would attack the babies. So throughout the pregnancy, I am going to get one shot. And if it's anything like my, my daughter, I only got one shot closer 
to when I was due probably in like that 30, 30 to 35 week range, I got a shot. And it went right in my arm, like right in the muscle. Let me tell you, it's not fun. Um, and then I get it again. I should uh, be getting it again, I believe, this time because it's my second pregnancy and there's more of a risk um, in your sec second pregnancy. So maybe I'll have to get it more often. But on a scale of pain, um, usually the tetanus is number one. And then the one that I have to get is right underneath the tetanus. It hurts <laughs> it hurts a lot but even then i would take that shot a thousand times before getting blood drawn it is purely anxiety coming from blood work so i'm not really nervous about it but i also know that that's going to be coming on later in my pregnancy so that's always fun so that is kind of like just a generic uh explanation of what happens if you have a negative blood type but I'm also a universal donor that's what it means as well now last week I talked a lot about actually I was really sick even filming that video I was very very sick I thank goodness can I get a hallelujah can I get an amen? Feels like the Holy Ghost running through ya. Cause I haven't got sick. <laughs> the past like three or four days, actually, I think today is day four. And oh, nope, nope. I chucked up a little bit this morning. But you know what? We had gone on a camping trip. And you guys are going to see that in a vlog. But we went on a camping trip and got home super late last night. So I stopped at McDonald's because I was so hungry. And I think that was just what kind of caused my upset stomach. Like any sort of fast food recently has not been sitting well. And I try to avoid it anyways, especially when I'm pregnant. But it didn't sit well. I could even tell after eating it. I just felt like absolute crud. Um, but the three days before that and even after my little upchuck this morning, which was wasn't even that bad. Oh my gosh, why am I so gassy? I, I've been able to hold down food. Again, I went on a like super short camping trip, just like a day, a full day and a half, um, and I didn't get sick. So I think I'm lucky enough that the brute of that morning sickness has subsided. I still have to be very cautious about eating sweets. Um, Ella and I had made some cupcakes because in August things are getting so hectic again. Um, I've been buying stuff for her birthday party at the end of August and we're just doing like unicorn cupcakes this year and we're going to make them. So we made a box just so I knew exactly how many cupcakes would come out of a box, get an idea of how much frosting I would need. And they were funfetti cupcakes and I was, I, I ate three <laughs> because I haven't had sweets in a while. Um, and I ate three and I didn't get sick. So I'm still trying to be careful with um, sweets and everything and I had to update you guys also about caffeine because I mentioned last week I felt that any sort of soda that I was taking in was really um, kind of jump-starting my my sickness and stuff I will tell you I've had soda probably um, twice since the last week I really try to stay away from it completely um, but I'm gonna be honest as well if I slipped up I'm gonna tell you guys you know um, I was really good though I drank I, I, I'm continuing to drink a ton of water a ton of simply lemonade so I'm definitely staying away from a lot of the caffeine I haven't had any any sort of chocolate besides um, actually not even besides because the cupcakes were not chocolate so I've had like very little sweets but I've stayed away from chocolate completely because I don't think that that's gonna sit well still and um, so I had soda because at one point we had gotten pizza but the grease kind of doesn't sit well with me either like I can eat like a slice and then I'll start kind of feeling a little bit icky so Whenever I eat pizza, I just crave soda. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to risk it. It's been like three or four days since I had last filmed um, and, and not drinking any any soda at all. So I had a glass of Pepsi, I believe it was, and I felt okay. So I think, I think the majority of my morning sickness, I can pretty much say, is over. Um, there are certainly times, even on the camping trip, where I kind of felt like I might have to get sick, but I've been really just trying to hold everything down because it's really not good for the baby to throw up that often. Um, I'm completely off of the B6 vitamins and the Unisom. It was just, it was too much to try to take them uh, where I already struggle to take pills to so crush them up and take them just to have them come up again. I'm like, you know what? 
I'm just going to try getting off them and trying to keep everything down. And so far, so good. So I don't want to say that like it's over completely because, again, I, I still feel like a little icky sometimes. But um, it certainly wasn't what it was all throughout June. I was an absolute mess. So hopefully, um, you know, it's still be the beginning of July, but hopefully this is the start of uh being able to kind of go back to normal. I have been, especially for breakfast, it seems like first thing in the morning if I am gonna get sick, uh, that's when it happens, which I'm grateful for because it used to be all day long. I even woke up in the middle of the night to have to get sick. So at this point, it just seems like if, I, if I'm gonna get sick, it's mostly gonna be first thing in the morning. So what I try to do, with the exception of this morning, I ended up trying Lucky Charms again, <laughs> which I think still kind of made me feel icky because it got me really sick last time, but I really wanted to try a bowl. But um, I had a bowl of Lucky Charms this morning. It didn't make me feel too good, so I think I'm still going to stay away from sugary cereals. But um, I've been pretty much, like in the morning, I make English muffins with eggs, and I usually make um, baked beans to go along with that as well. And that's been my, like, kind of go to breakfast um, throughout this whole morning sickness thing. And I feel better once I have like food in my stomach. But I also try to be careful of how much liquid I'm intaking while I eat too because I feel like even if I'm having that breakfast, if I pair it with like um, an apple juice, which is natural sugar, but um, not apple juice is kind of kind of making me feel a little gross too so I'll try to have like water with it or something so that's kind of an update on the caffeine on the morning sickness which I touched on um, I also touched on the vivid dreams I've been having they're not as I'm still having them but not every single night like it was I'm telling you every night I would wake up and remember my dream like perfectly last night I had one but it wasn't a bad dream which was great I'll share with it I'll share it briefly because this I don't have a whole lot to talk about this week but there is a there's an amusement park that I don't live too far from and there is a um there's a ride called a Star Blaster and it just it's one of those rides maybe I'll throw up like a quick picture or something here just so you have an idea you guys sit all around it like shoots you up and then come down and come back up and back down and eventually it comes to an end and for some reason I brought Ella on the ride she wanted to go on with me um so we went on it twice and she ended up getting sick like really really sick and started throwing up at home and um oh hi arrow he opens the door by himself by the way um, so she ended up getting like really sick and that's all I remember from the dream. So that's like the most vivid dream that I've had. Um, but there are some da days that I'll wake up and not remember them anymore. So, um, I'm, I'm grateful for that as well because as, as fun as dreams are to have sometimes, I was just having really, um, like just awful dreams. I did not like the dreams I was having. So, uh, that's kind of coming, coming to an end as well. The last thing I want to, I want to talk about, I meant to talk about it last week, but I had broken out in a rash and I'm not sure when it's coming up, but I'm going to have a video called, uh, mess, be, men's best shaving secret. And you'll see in that video that I'm complaining about a little splotch on my leg that is really, really itchy. Um, and I, after filming that video, like a week went by and it grew and grew and grew and grew into this major rash. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Major rash on my left thigh. And I started Googling it. I just want to make sure that it wasn't going to be harmful for my baby. Um, I've, I have eczema. I've recently developed eczema and it basically happened on my arms and same sort of thing started off as like a, you, you can even maybe see this like a couple little bumps on my arm here but it started off as just a couple little bumps kept scratching and scratching and scratching and scratching and eventually it turned into this like big patch um, and it was so incredibly itchy but I had this little like a vino uh, eczema cream I was using on it and after a while it went away so when I first saw this rash I started applying that eczema cream thinking to deal with it the same way that I dealt with my arm and it just grew into this major rash and then that rash started bruising and I'm like I am scratching so hard that I'm bruising my skin so I ended up calling my OBGYN 
and I explained the situation. I said I have eczema, but when it broke out on my arm, it didn't break out like it did on my leg. So she ended up contacting the on-call doctor and the doctor said it sounded more like um, a dermatologist problem. Now, when I did a little bit of research online about rashes in pregnancy, there is a rash called PUPS. Uh, I don't remember what it stands for, what the scientific term is, but it's called PUPS, P-U-P-P-P-S. Usually, it starts on the abdomen of pregnant women and it starts in the stretch marks. And it didn't really look like what I had, but I'm like, there's no way that this is eczema. So that's what had made me call my doctor and I told her maybe it's pups, but it doesn't make sense because I'm only in my first trimester. So when they called me back and told me it was most likely a dermatologist problem, I figured it was eczema. So I kind of just tried to deal with it, but it turned into something that was so extremely painful. My legs are so jacked up right now, but I'm going to show you because I, I need to show you my belly anyways. Um, but I ended up going to I ended up going to Walmart um, on my camping trip because I was in just so much pain, and I said I have to get something for this eczema. So I ended up picking up it's just a one percent hydro hydrocortisone cream. It's for skin irritation, rashes, insects bites, eczema, and psoriasis, and inflammation and redness. Now my itching isn't like completely gone. I do carry this around with me. I put it in my bag so anytime I feel that like I'm really really get starting to get itchy I'll apply it now I'm gonna show you my legs but I also feel like it's starting to develop a bit on my neck so it kind of seems to be spreading all over the place I'm a little you know I'm gonna I'm gonna take my time learning this I feel like I just gave up morning sickness now to just deal with eczema which has nothing to do with pregnancy um, but it's just something new so let me show you my disgusting legs for a second okay so if you look at my left leg which is the right side for you guys but it's not even that bad anymore but you can see I'm gonna kind of outline it for you and it does go all the way up into like the crevice of my leg but you can see this big old red splotch right here this entire thing was one big itchy rash <laughs> I mean it doesn't itch right now this leg is actually not really bothering me anymore um, it started spreading a little bit over here as well but not as bad now if you look at my right leg oh yeah that's all bruising y'all that's all bruising purely from itching from itching my legs <laughs> Do you see why, look at that. Do you see why I had to get cream? Cause I was in so much pain and I just was itching it and not even realizing it because I'd be doing it in my sleep too. But this is what was happening. So that is why I had decided that I really needed to get something because I was destroying my legs. So my left leg with the big red patch, it's not bothering me anymore. But that's where it started and I'm so grateful that's not bothering me anymore. Now my right leg hurts <laughs> and it's bruising and that's what made me call contact my OBGYN and I'm like I don't know what to do I'm in so much pain and I have acrylic nails so I was just like ah, you know what I mean I, I, I wanted to chop off my legs and throw them in the damn ocean because I don't need them. So that's what I've been dealing with but let me stand up as well show you guys my belly let's see here move you guys real quick. Um, I'm definitely showing a little bit more. I've honestly been living in like shorts because any sort of fabric that touches my legs make them itch. Um, but a little bit. I mean, you can tell more. Like I have a little like tube dress that I wear. Um, it sticks out a little bit more. Oh, look at my, look at my fly. What are you doing? <laughs> Oh my goodness. So so other than, you know, just dealing with the eczema that really has nothing to do with my pregnancy, but I like to keep you updated about what's going on in my body every week. Um, my belly is sticking out a little bit more. So any sort of like jeans that I wear, like these shorts are a little bit loose. So I'm able to grow into them. Um, still wearing anything spandex around my neck. <laughs> what? Still wearing anything spandex around my belly still is not the most comfortable thing in the world. So I try to try to stick to um, dresses mostly. Um, but if I'm like out running errands today, I'll just wear loose shorts and camis, like things that kind of let me breathe a little bit. But that's pretty much what's going on with my body, guys. That's pretty much the update. Now, I know this is really random. 
I felt like I didn't have a whole lot to talk about today and I'm just too damn excited about this. So very quickly, because we also are a beauty channel, I want to unbox the Jeffree Star Jawbreaker palette. I'm not gonna go, I'm doing a whole different video on this. Um, I, I wanna let you guys know that that video is coming out soon. I'm actually planning on filming it the day that this video comes up. So hopefully I'll have it uh, later this week. But this showed up at my doorstep today and I'm like, I'm filming a video anyway. I don't look good. <laughs> I haven't been wearing makeup for the past couple of days because I was out camping, so I didn't bother. Um, and today, we, we've honestly, we've been running around just doing errands for Ella's birthday party. We went to the uh, party store to order balloons, which they have a shortage on helium. Strangest thing, so I couldn't order them today. I got Arrow a little birthday present because his birthday was on June 1st. My kitten is not a kitten anymore. Oh, ugh, I hate that noise of cardboard. Ugh. So this took a while to get you here too. When it this launched, this was the first time I ordered something from Jeffrey that was like a launch. So I didn't realize like, you know, how long it could take to get. And I didn't get priority shipping because I'm like, I'm not paying priority. It's gonna take a while to get to me anyways because it is a launch. The last thing I ordered from Jeffrey was a, oh, I hate that noise, was a, um, I think a Valentine's Day mystery box. Yeah, I'm trying to think, yeah. I don't own a ton of his makeup. I want to, but I just don't. Um, oh, I'm so excited, though. I just, I just want to take a quick look at it, and I didn't feel right about not doing it on camera with you guys. Um, but this is actually the only thing that I ordered from the collection, to be honest. Like, this was the main thing that I wanted. I got the big palette, not the little one. I got the, um, which just says Jawbreaker Eyeshadow Palette. It comes with a, oh, this is so cute. <laughs> I, I really do love uh, the marketing that came with it as well. <laughs> so funny. Okay, let's take a quick look. Oh my god, I'm so excited! Yay! <laughs> oh, alright, cool. Very, very cool. This is the Unicarton. I do love the idea of the Jawbreaker. I thought it was very, very creative because it's so colorful. And then the packaging itself is this hot pink. Oh, it's actually like they stand up. They're like raised lettering. I just want to take a quick look. I'm so excited. I just want to take a quick peek. Ow! 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 The corner hit that rash on my leg and that hurt really bad. Oh, oh my God. It's beautiful. <laughs> it is beautiful. So I'll probably film this um, this weekend. My husband actually has next week or this week um, off. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna film something colorful. I'll just have to look at it. Oh my gosh. Oh my god! <laughs> I, I mean, I'm reading. I'm reading the um, names. <laughs> Anyways, I'm really excited about this. I'm gonna put it back in the unicart, and so I am able to film that this week as well. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching week ten. I, it's crazy. Um, so we'll have week 11 still in the first trimester. Week 12, I believe, starts the second trimester. But, uh, you know, I'll keep you guys updated every week. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, please go ahead and leave a thumbs up. Also, while you're down there, if you <laughs> I can't even finish. <laughs> also, while you're down there, if you don't want to miss any new videos, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.